spent three years in one place, you get called for jury duty. <laughs> Fine. At the time, I was teaching a course at Princeton on the evaluation of evidence. So, so there we are. So there I am. You know, I, I, I'm, I show up on time, ready to serve. And you get that part where they ask questions, and the lawyer asks questions. They say, well, I see here you're, you're an astrophysicist. What's that? So I say, well, it's, you know, laws of physics, apply to the universe, big bang, black hole, the whole bit. I said, fine. He said, he says, says, you teach at Princeton. What do you teach there? I said, I teach a class on the evaluation of evidence and the relative unreliability of eyewitness testimony. <laughs> I was on the street five minutes later. I would just... I didn't mean to get kicked out of the room. <laughs> the worst thing you could show up at the lab with is eyewitness testimony. It's scary because in science we know, in engineering we know how bad eyewitness testimony is. The lowest form of evidence you could possibly present, yet in the court of law, it is high evidence. Well, that was three years ago. Guess what happened a few months ago? I got called back. Okay, well, I'm not teaching that class now, so maybe I'll get through. So I'm fine, so I'm up there, you know, and there we are, and there's the, the, the Q&A part. There's some French word for that, I forgot. Voyeur day, or day away. <laughs> I, I swear I don't remember, I'm not French fluent. It's, it's a way to obscure the process, rather than just say in English that it's Q&A, right? You know, in, in astrophysics, just a quick aside here, in astrophysics, we tell it like it is. There's no obfuscation in astrophysics. What do you call spots on the sun? Sunspots, okay? Big red star, red giants. Regions of space, you fall in, you don't come out, light doesn't come out, black hole. <laughs> the beginning of all time, space, and energy, the big bang. We love our one-syllable words. Try to have a conversation with a chemist and a biologist. Forget it. So we call the most important thing in the universe, big bang. The biologist, the most important molecule in your body, well, that's deoxyribonucleic acid. <laughs> so they got this whole vocabulary. It makes you think that what they're doing is complicated because they've got that lexicon. The universe is complicated enough. The last thing I want is complicated words getting in the way. That had nothing to do with the rest of what I'm saying. I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so... Jury duty again. So I'm in there and like the judge reads the, the, the basics of the case. It's drug possession, cocaine possession in Manhattan. And the guy's right there, you know, the, the guy being charged. And the judge reads the facts of the case. The defendant is charged with possession of 1,700 milligrams of cocaine. This was found on his body, he was arrested, and he is now on trial. Okay, so we get to the Q&A part again, and they say, well, where are you from, who, you know, do you know any lawyers? Fine, okay. I don't have any lawyer friends, apparently. But anyhow, so we get to the end and the judge says, is there any question you would like to ask back to the court about this process? I said, yes. I'm sorry, I had to, I, 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 yes. Your Honor, why did you say he was in possession of 1,700 milligrams of cocaine? That equals 1.7 grams. The, one, the thousand there cancels with the milli to get 1.7 grams, which is less than the weight of a dime. 
So I said this, and the whole jury is like, I mean, not the jury, you know, the people who were, I was out of the street again. Okay? I'm just trying to under, do we say, do you say, well, do you say, I will see you in a billion nanoseconds? You know, you, know, you don't talk that way. That's just, it's fuzzy thinking. There's more fuzzy thinking out there. By the way, there's, there's really a point to all of this. So <laughs> in case you're wondering, uh, there's a point. More fuzzy thinking. There's a movement afoot called the intelligent design movement. Now, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with it, the assertion is there are things out there we can't explain that are too marvelous or too intricate, and they defy all common scientific account. And so it's ascribed to intelligent design. If you want to go that way, that's a slippery slope, and I'll tell you why. Tell you why. Because I could start a movement called the stupid design movement. <laughs> let's, let's see where that goes. For example, what's this about your appendix? What's going on there? It's got no point in your body except to possibly kill you. That's stupid design, okay? And what about your pinky toenail? What's that about? What? What? You can't even put nail polish on it. It's like, there's no, there's no real estate there. And how about things like bad breath? And the fact that you breathe and drink through the same hole in your body. What's, about, what's that about? So that some fraction of us choke to death every year. Well, I, then you got asteroid impacts that can render us extinct? Looks pretty stupid to me. I, I got one for you, last one, ready? What's that going on between our legs? It's like we have an entertainment complex in the middle of a sewage system. <laughs> what, what, who, who designed that? You know, <laughs> I'm just telling you what it is. I'm not, I didn't make this up. It's, it's what it is, right? Plus, I'm not trying to get anybody to vote for me, so I get to speak to you straight, because nobody else inside the Beltway will, okay? Now, in the limit, in the limit, there are people who want to put warning stickers on biology textbooks saying, theory of evolution, just a theory, one of many theories, take it or leave it. Now, here's my concern about that. By the way, religion long predates science. It'll be here forever. That's not even the issue here. The issue is, it's religion coming into the science classroom. There's no tradition of scientists knocking down the Sunday school door, telling preachers what to teach. There are no scientists picketing outside of churches. There's no such tradition as that. There's been this peaceful coexistence forever, by and large. In fact, the greatest conflict is not between religion and science, it's between religion and religion. So, what, so, now here, now it's, this is not simply an academic point. Let me tell you where it can lead. Because this experiment has already been done. Go back in time, 1100 years ago, 1200 years ago. A period of years between AD 800 and AD 1100. The intellectual center